Gary DePaul with Unlabeled Leadership. Welcome to episode 51. Come on, Chip Baker, go get it. Here's a shout out to listeners in Florida, in particular in Palm Harbor, Largo, Orlando, St. Petersburg, Riverview, Valrico, Davenport, Lithia, Clearwater, Bradenton, Safe Harbor, Safety Harbor, Port Ritchie, and Tampa. With that, let's get started. Chip Baker is an author, coach, podcaster, and speaker. By the way, Chip is the only person I know that has his own theme song. His, <laughs> you've got to check it out. It's on his YouTube channel. If I ever need a little lift me up, I'll just go to his YouTube channel and I'll listen to that theme song. It gets me every time. Chip is just an amazing person. I think the best way that you can describe Chip is what Kyle did in his LinkedIn recommendation. I want to read it to you. Here's what he wrote. Chip and I met over a year ago and he has proved to be a wealth of both inspiration and information. His drive to see people succeed is really second to none. From the minute you meet Chip, you can tell he listens with an open heart and mind. Chip is a strong and authentic servant leader, coach, educator, and human being who really lives by and encourages others to go get it. I encourage you to go to Chip's YouTube channel or go to one of his podcasts. You can find the links in the show notes. Part one, a mother's impact. I often talk about the seven leadership principles and even mention occasionally the 26 or some of the 26 related beliefs. And I write about nine practices of leadership. The whole point of all those is to help you become more effective at leading. Chip shares with us six traits and a little bit about his background. Here's Chip to explain. I'm a fourth generation educator, a teacher, former coach, and my my family growing up were were church folk and educators. Oh, yeah. And so I say church folk with no S because, you know, we were in church a lot. And the reason for that is because my mother was a minister of music. And so I was blessed and fortunate to be raised by some great people as well as be around some awesome folk to learn from in my community in my educational settings, teachers and coaches, uh, and it's carry on through, throughout my life. In my career, I was blessed to be around some great people that taught me some really neat things that has truly helped me be the best version of myself. So when you ask that question, I think of a collective. Yeah. I think that, that I am a product of a whole lot of people loving me and taking care of me. So when you ask the question, I think of traits, and I think that there is six traits that those people have had. I think they initiated action. I think they made an effort to be the best version of themselves. I think they put everything into the right perspective. I think they accepted guidance. They continued to find the good in every situation that they were involved in, and they trusted they could learn something from every experience that they faced. If you paid attention to that, what each one of those words started with, it spells out something and that it spells out impact. And those people impacted my life in a positive way. It sounds like you were definitely surrounded by incredible role models that yes. shaped your character. Yes, indeed. You know, there were so many people that I could look to to see what I wanted to be like when I grew up to be a big boy. You know, (laughs) when I grew up to be a big boy, that's what I wanted to be like. And granted, you know, just like anything in life, there were also some things that I saw that I did not want to be like, right? It's a choice. We have to make that choice to grow in the right direction. Every choice we make either moves us forward or holds us back. And so I'm I'm grateful that I've made, for the most part, some good choices uh, (laughs) to help me uh, be in the place that I am now. Having made choices that may not be so favorable, it's all part of learning and growing. Indeed, indeed. And we have to live a life where we're not afraid to live and learn. We have to live, just live life to the fullest. And then along that way, like you said, along that journey, you learn so much, yes, about life, but more so you learn so much about yourself. 
When we live life to our fullest, we make an impact. Come on. Come on. Big impact. <laughs> Big. <laughs> Amen. I love that. <laughs> Part two, transactional or transformational. Throughout our lives, we pick up these insights that guide us to live more deliberately. They help us grow both mentally and morally, and they help us take charge in the direction that we want to go. Chip shares with us one of these insights and more. Here's Chip. I grew up with a superhero in my house, which is my mother. Ah. Right, One amazing lady, uh, just a great lady in the community, great lady for kids, great lady for, for people, did some awesome things. And so I was able to see what superhero actions in my house by my mother. And so I was a young guy, can't remember the age, but I remember her telling me to go do something in the house. Yeah. And I didn't do it up to her expectations, which was probably not very good, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she says in the voice, boy, if you're going to do something, you make sure you do it right or don't waste your time. Yeah. And so I've taken that in everything that I do in my life. You know, I wear many hats. I've worn many hats in my life. I've just strived to do things the right way throughout my life. I'm so thankful that I was taught that lesson at a young age because I think that it's truly helped me because I can't just give half effort to nothing I do. That becomes a guiding principle for you in how you approach tasks, situations, and I, I, I get it. Oh, yes. And really, it forms your habit. Yeah. And what it does is it makes you have great success habits. And then from there, habits develop into amazing routines. And when you have great routines in your life, it makes you consistent. It allows you to be consistent and have consistency in your life. And what that does, there's two things. It builds trust. And so there's two types of trust that it builds. You know, the first others around you trust you because they know what they're going to get from you. Mm. Like they know that they can depend on you. They know that if, if they ask you to do something, boy, it's going to be done right. you right. Yeah. And so, and then the other, the other thing is it brings about self-trust because you've shown yourself that you've been disciplined to do the little things the right way. And it gives you the confidence that you need to attack anything that you're going to, anything that you're going to face because you've already been through some things. And you've been through it by just doing the little things the right way with your habits, with your routines, which makes you consistent. Now you trust that. Bring it on. Bring the challenge on. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to attack it. Let's go. Chip, I can't help but as you're talking, thinking of little things that I did not do. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Dude, as I think it's a great reminder, and I love how you talk about the two types of trust, and in particular, the self-trust. And it is a way of building your character and modeling to other people how to build character. Oh, indeed. When you do that, you get opportunities from that as well, because opportunities bring opportunity. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yeah. And, and what I mean by that is, like I talked about the whole trust deal. People want people that do things right on their teams. So when you are a person that is conscientious, have morals, have character to do the little things the right way, you're going to get opportunities because people see that. And I can tell you the jobs that I've had in my life, most of the jobs, a lot of the th opportunities I've had, it's not because of Chip Baker's skills, because <laughs> there's a whole lot of people out there more talented than me, probably, you know? It's I've been I've gotten opportunities based on because somebody else thought highly of me or, you know, somebody saw something that I did was like, man, that's that's pretty good stuff. Yeah. And then I got an opportunity uh, from that. And so you know, not that I was even seeking the opportunities. All I know is my mama said, boy, you better do things the right way. I don't waste your time. And so that's what I've tried to do. When you're doing things the right way and you're striving for that. It is a way of influencing others oh, and yes. influencing them in a way that opens up opportunities that may not have been there before. So I, I really, I like that. I'm glad that you said that because we all have people that are depending on us. Uh, we all have people that are looking up to us. Even if we don't choose to be in those shoes, there are people looking to us for guidance or leadership. 
Yeah, even ourselves. Uh, right, exactly. It makes us push ourselves even harder to step outside our, our comfort zone to be the best version of ourselves for those people, which is our why. Yes. It's our why. And then when we understand our why, it allows us to live a life intentional and on purpose every day, every moment of every day, which, man, it influences and impacts so many people. There are a lot of people who go through life and I'm going to borrow from one of your videos that they live their life very transactional. Mm. <laughs> but when you're deliberate, I'm Come thinking on. of Chick-fil-A, I'm thinking Come of Chick-fil-A, you're hey. transformational in Come what on. you do. I hey. love it. Hey, my pleasure. <laughs> I learned my, from you. My, I learned my from pleasure. You. And, and it's, and it's so true. I mean, that's, that was an experience in my life that, that influenced me. You know, it made, it made me see that it's important to be transformational over transactional. You know, transformational allows you to not just leave a legacy, but live a legacy by your day-to-day -day action. Transactional is just surface level. And we don't want to live that way. We want to go deep and do things the right way with everything we do. The story that you told about that really highlighted it is when you went into a store and the cashier just went through the motions, did the stuff, followed the procedure precisely, yes. did it exactly. And so great. But you went to Chick-fil-A, they acted. And I think that I really believe that they believe that because I, I do have a nephew who worked there. Yeah. They sincerely welcomed you and were happy to see you. Yeah, they don't even know me, but they, <laughs> they are smiling. Man, they made my day better. So, you know, besides the point that I was getting great food, which, you know, it's awesome food there. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm a food guy. <laughs> but, uh, but when I left that transformational experience, I left being better and better equipped to go make more of a positive difference in our world because of that transformational interaction. And really, we all have the opportunity each day, I don't care who you are, where you're at, whatever you've been through, we all have the opportunity to make transformational differences in the lives of the people that we're around every moment of every day. When you can see the difference and you actually consciously think about transaction versus transformational, that becomes another type of guiding principle. Yes, indeed. Part three, what gratitude and attitude get you. To effectively lead, we need to continuously develop our leadership capabilities. And that means making certain choices, not letting life passively happen to you, but really taking charge. Chip provides us some insight into how we can do this. Here's Chip again. And looking at a way to help others develop mentally and morally, I feel that it's important that we take the right path. And what I mean by that is when we're doing things, if we just stay on our path and our assignment that the big man has aligned us with, just stay on your path and don't worry about the distractions, what everybody else is doing, what car somebody else is driving on this. Just worry about what you're doing and focus in on your path. And in order to do that, we have to make sure that we surround ourselves with the right people. Because when we surround ourselves with the right people, they will teach us the things that we need to know to be great leaders. The second is we have to have a great attitude and we have to have gratitude. And for me, gratitude is the attitude that determines our altitude. I'm going to say that one again. Gratitude is the attitude that determines our altitude. And so when we're grateful, great things happen for us in our life. Yes, things could be better, but they could be way worse. And so we have to be grateful for that we do have uh, and have the proper attitude. The next component is time. Uh, to help us be great leaders, we have to value our time. We have to know that it's the, really the only uh, limited commodity. And so once it's over, it's over. Once it's done, it's done. Every moment of every day is important. So we have to make sure that we live on purpose and intentional in each moment that we have so that we can continue to grow those moments and help others in those moments. That's the next component. The last component is help others. What good is it for us to achieve great things when we haven't helped anybody else along the way? 
So it's important to make sure to take those blessings in the lessons that we've learned along our journey and then use those to be a blessing to someone else. Because really, when you think about it, we all have had people in our lives that have done that for us. So let's return the favor. For leaders to help others, to influence, to impact others, it's important to stay on the right path. Surround yourself with the right people, have the right attitude, value your time, and then help others. And I see all four of those as being integrated. Yes. You may surround yourself with the right people, but if you don't have the gratitude, Mm. you may not recognize the greatness of those around you. You don't appreciate uh, those people around you, those great people. And the time, you have 24 hours in a day, I have a 24 hours in a day. It is a commodity that is the great equalizer. Yes. When we prioritize other people and, and helping them, your fourth one, then it speaks volumes about your character. Indeed. I I agree with you on that. I think it's been a blessing to be able to do that and learn that from so many people, but then also have the wherewithal to be in situations to just listen and watch and observe. My thanks to Chip Baker. If you'd like to learn more about Chip and the Success Chronicles, go to the show notes. Also, if you like to leave a message or Make a comment. Go to unlabelleadership.com, click on the message icon, and you can leave up to a one-minute message. Maybe I'll play it on the air. I'd like to thank those who contribute to the show. Your contributions help with the production costs. But mostly, I'd like to thank you for listening. Until next time, lead on. Lead on.